Welcome back to this update. Thought I'd take a little bit of a break from the trees and do some groundwork. I've had a kit I want to put together from Cornerstone, uh, the industrial uh, office, and uh, needed a building for around my uh, industrial plant. Uh, which I'm looking for one more to uh, the concrete company. It needs a little something over in its area too, but we'll work on that later on. So I'm going to put this kit together, do a little weathering on it, show you what i got going on that. So let's go do it. I'm putting together a uh, small industrial building, Cornerstone, uh, and uh, it's their typical uh, gray, plastic, brown, uh, but the texture on the outside is brick and I wanted to uh, try to get a little bit more of the maybe a little mortar type look in there so uh, first I painted it with uh, acrylic uh, this happens to be a British crimson uh, easy for anybody else to say um, Gave it a coat of that and then I put a light coat of uh, sealer on top of it. And I'm going to use some weathering powders. Um, I have some, it's a whitish gray material that we're going to put into that. Got a fairly uh, stiff bristled brush here and some weathering powder and uh, I'm going to really load the uh, push it down in the cracks. This weathering powder is not chalk based, it is the pigment. So let me get this packed in here and uh, we'll pick up the next one. Now I've got this uh, packed in here pretty well. Don't worry about uh, brushing everything off because we're going to use a little bit of alcohol and some of this pigment to let it flow into the cracks and crevices. Here's the uh, alcohol and pigment. It's about 10% pigment, 90% alcohol. And uh, you have to kind of keep it swirling to keep it mixed up. But I just take my brush, load it up, and we're just going to take it and we're just going to dab it onto the brickwork, this will allow it to flow okay we've got this uh, pretty well up with alcohol take a few minutes to dry if you got a hair dryer uh, light to breeze on it uh, make it dry a little quicker and then we'll continue on from there and once it's dried, it kind of looks pretty ugly, but uh, I, that's from the uh, caking on. Uh, what I do is I take a, a tissue, put a little bit of alcohol on it, make a little pad, and then just take it and just kind of wipe across that. And you can remove as much or as little as you want. Uh, sometimes I have to come back two or three times to... Uh, kind of get it just in the right spots it, and if you wipe a little bit too much you can put a little more weathering powder on and uh, start over again in that area uh, let me see here here's another one that uh, a little bit heavy in some spots Uh, sometimes you can just use a regular brush and uh, brush over and uh, knock off some of the parts you want uh, to do that. Uh, here's another one. Uh, when I seal these, I, uh, well, I picked a product at the uh, art store. You can use your mat. Uh, or Del coat or whatever, but I find you really Don't hit it too hard if you hit it too hard. It soaks up a lot of the uh, uh, Weathering product uh, pigments 
Uh, I put on uh, two or three real light coats on top of it to uh, seal that in. So, anyway, we've got some walls done there. We'll just kind of continue on and I'll try and show you the finished product once we uh, start putting some walls up and getting it together. Okay, we've got uh, the walls uh, installed on the base. Uh, I like to do it this way, just my way of uh, kind of putting it together. Uh, they do uh, provide uh, the windows and uh, probably could have gone ahead and put those in first. Uh, they are the clear plastic. I'm not a big fan of these, but I do use this as a template uh, as I like to uh, use the uh, translucent paper. Uh, and I can print on this. I've got the uh, software to uh, print drapes or shades, uh, that type of thing on here. If you light your buildings, I think they look a lot better with the uh, translucent paper than, uh, than the clear plastic ones. So we'll get uh, started on the windows and... Um, we will get the roof and the rear of the uh, building uh, start and get that assembled and we'll have this one uh, pretty much completed. Okay, we've got the uh, window uh, treatment uh, in and uh, the one thing with this uh, commercial building from Cornerstone is that they give you a ridge to mount the roof on here and you mount it across here, there's nothing on the sides. Uh, I wound up taking some eighth in, uh, sixteenth, one sixteenth inch uh, square styrene and I glued it in uh, to make it, give it some side support. The reason I did that, uh, the roof, I've been trying to get this bend out of it here and it was, this is the way it came packaged so it's it's kind of tweaked there a bit. So to give it a little more support and I can glue it down, uh, I put these uh, side strips in. So we'll get the roof on and prepare that, get the back of it on, the hand railings, and we'll wrap this uh, build up. Let me finish up uh, the commercial building pretty much. I have a little signage yet to put on it. A uh, program that I make the signs kind of broke down on me when I computer crash so but, uh, here we have it, it turned out uh, real nice here's the uh, office building for the refinery I say still have a little bit of signage to put on it. We'll start getting the uh, ground cover, a parking lot out front, and ground cover down around the, the refinery area. That's going to wrap up uh, this video. Uh, hopefully, I've given you a few uh, pointers on uh, the weathering and techniques, whatever. Uh, a couple of uh, videos ago, I talked about uh, campfires and LEDs, Arduinos. Uh, and I mentioned, uh, I called it a light pipe. Um, it's uh, basically a clear tube, fiber optics. Uh, this happens to be a, uh, an eighth of an inch. Probably for a campfire, uh, 3 sixteenths quarter would be a max, but probably the 3 sixteenths kind of round the head a little bit. Um, if you put some LEDs at one end, it's amazing what you're going to see at the other end. It'll uh, reproduce it and uh, make a great campfire. So anyway, my light pipe. Thank you very much uh, for watching. Hopefully you have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next time.